All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rami Al Hassan. I'm a PhD student at Brigham Young University. Today, I want to talk to you about the production of polymeric particles via non-solvent induced phase separation. So, polymeric colloids are very useful in medicine. The figure you see here, we have uh, polymeric microspheres and uh, they're used to carry proteins in the body and they're biodegradable and free of organic solvents so they're really biocompatible and they have several advantages over other nano carriers like my cells for example they're relatively easier to produce and they have much higher stability and this helps in storing them and administering them in the body so how can we make such particles and how can we control their properties so we picked a process called non-solvent induced phase separation or in short NIPS in this process we have a polymeric solution that comes in contact with a bad solvent or a non-solvent and uh, by the exchange of non-solvent with solvent uh, as the non-solvent concentration increases inside the polymeric solution you have phase separation of the polymer from the bad solvent and this can potentially lead to formation of pores inside porous particles or formation of membranes in films so we can look at this process in the lens of a ternary phase diagram a ternary phase diagram is a phase diagram of compositions and we have 100% composition of pure component on each of the heads of the triangle. For example, at the top we have the solvent, 100%, and as you move down, you get lower, lower concentration until it's 0% at the bottom. And we have this two-phase gap, and basically outside the two-phase gap, you have a homogeneous mixture, inside it you have a phase separation into polymer rich phase on the left side and polymer lean phase on the right side. So when we talk about NIPS process, we start with a mixture of a polymer with a solvent and with this exchange we're increasing the concentration of non-solvent, so moving downwards and reducing the concentration of solvent till we eventually reach the two-phase gap. So this is the concentration inside the polymeric solution. So, how can we control the process parameters in order to produce the particles that we need? Well, one might think that starting from different concentration, different points on this ternary phase diagram can result in different structure. Or the type of solvents, so different interactions can have different phase gaps or interactions between the two solvents can result in different structures. So we're going to focus on one aspect of our study, which is the type of solvents. And we're going to do a simulation study. And to do our simulations of the NIPS process, we're using phase field simulations. So in our model, in terms of thermodynamics, we have a free energy functional, this free energy functional has two parts, uh, flory hudgens free energy density, and this term basically represents the penalty for forming interfaces. And when you derive the free energy functional, you get the chemical potential, and uh, the transport equations that we're going to solve, basically equation one is a set of uh, Diffusion equations, so the change of concentration with time, the convection term, basically is governed by the gradients of chemical potential. And we have advanced hydrodynamics by using a momentum equation. And our system is constrained by the continuity equation. So by solving the system of equations using advanced pseudospectral numerical techniques, we can basically observe the concentration change with time and the velocity change and solve that for multi-phase multi-component systems 
and uh, we can deal with various interfaces because an interface as you see here is basically a concentration change between two phases so oh and we recently published a paper about the thermodynamic consistency of such models I will encourage you to read this paper so let's look at our setup for the study so we basically set up a system where we have a non-solvent bath that is in contact with a polymeric film and we fix the bath and we varied the initial concentration of the film over this whole space outside the two-phase gap and uh, we observed three main behaviors so the first behavior we basically have mixing of the two phases and no phase separation and uh, the second behavior we have phase separation with a sharp interface between the two phases which is done here by the green line and the third behavior is a phase separation with spinodal immediate spinodal decomposition of the film and basically if you look at the whole area outside the two phase gap we have three regimes so regime one again no phase separation two is sharp interface and three immediate spinodal decomposition so this was very interesting especially that we have we, we did short simulation so one might think that after a long time you, you would eventually reach phase separation but usually if you have in short simulations if you have an immediate spinodal decomposition this could be the main driver for forming asymmetric pores so after that we looked at some experimental work on microporous particles and we've noticed that the type of uh, solvents that were used uh, resulted in huge phase gaps compared to ours and they also have they might have some interaction between the two solvents so we wanted to make our phase gap bigger in order to have better comparison uh, to the experimental work so we were like how do you increase the size of the phase gap so one might think well increase the binary interaction between the polymer and the non-solvent or another way would be to have some interaction between the two solvents because we could see here there might be some immiscibility between the two solvents so first we started with increasing the binary interaction between the polymer and the non-solvent so as you see here when you increase it the phase gap increases and the regime 3 also significantly increases which means you have higher potential of uh, having spinodal decomposition and forming pores in particles and this trend keeps going as you increase uh, chi pn then we looked at uh, having some interaction between the solvent and non-solvent so we started with this value below the critical chi and when we reached the critical chi we noticed that we're at the limit where we no longer have a critical point and once we exceeded that value we have no critical point at all and we had some finite miscibility between the solvent and the non-solvent and as you see going from this point at the beginning having some interaction between the two solvents reduced regime 3 significantly and as you go higher and higher we no longer see regime 3 and we predict that or we think that the reason behind this is now we have a competition between 
the interaction between the two solvents and the interaction between the polymer and the non-solvent. And with higher interaction of the two solvents, you're reducing the erratic spinodal decomposition of the polymer and the non-solvent. So basically we learned that initial composition really matters. So being in regime one, two, or three could have different effect on the microstructural evolution. And the selection of solvents is important. So having higher interaction between the two solvents or higher admissibility might reduce the chance of forming uh, porous particles or particles with asymmetric pores. Lastly, I would like to thank uh, the BYU Board of Trustees and the Office of Research Computing for their funding. And this is our research group. I stand here at the back. And thank you all for listening.